Okay, let's continue. We are still sa reactions in Aquarius Solutions. Yesterday, we discussed um, concentrations of solutions, especially um, the molarity. So we computed molarity yesterday. Do not forget the formula. Ha? Molarity is equal to the moles of the solute divided by the liters of solution. So you have to understand the problem and follow the steps. You have to understand the problem and follow the following steps. You have here, if the weight of the substance is given, weight in grams, the first thing that you need to do is compute for the moles. So in computing the moles, you need this formula. Moles is equal to the weight of the substance divided by its molecular weight. So after computing for the moles, that's the time you can compute for the concentration in molarity. So our formula again, molarity is equal to the moles of the solute divided by liters of solution. <clears throat> okay, this is the process huh, that you will do for our problem solving involving concentration in molarity but if the uh, if the given class is baliktad the molarity is already given and you are asked to solve for the weight in grams of the solute needed um syempre you start with molarity you compute first for the mole this time you will be using this formula itong Molarity is equal to moles over liter of solution. You just derive it so that you can solve for the moles. And then after computing for the moles, that's the time you can compute for the weight in grams. So pwedeng baliktad. Um, baliktad rin mo lang din yung formula. So in computing for the weight in grams, you, you use the second formula. Moles is equal to weight over the molecular Wait, you just substitute the given or you can actually derive the formula so that it will be easier for you to compute the weight in grams. So it's just a little review of our discussion yesterday. Do you have questions about our discussion yesterday? I have already uploaded the recorded discussion and provided the link in your Schoology course. So you can access that anytime for you to review. Okay, you don't have question anymore. Let's move on. We have here dil dilution of solutions. When you say dilution class, <clears throat> you are making a less concentrated solution from, okay, from hagaling sa more concentrated one. So, <clears throat> Example sa mga bahay natin, I have mentioned this in the laboratory, but for the sake of the group too, uh, when you are like um, making a juice, no, like example, orange juice, and then after um, mo siya, you tasted it, and then uh, tam isra siya kaayo, so you are saying na the, the juice na imuhang timpla is very concentrated. So what are we going to do? Diba? We, are add, we have to add water to make it less concentrated. Adding water there, class, is actually a process of uh, process called dilution. So even in our home or in the laboratory, we are actually doing dilution. So again, mag-prepare tayo ng less concentrated solution from a more concentrated one. So in this screen, we have here an example wherein you have, uh, in the laboratory, we'll be preparing one liter of a 0 0.400 molar potassium permanganate. So this one is the less concentrated solution. 
So again, 0.400 molar potassium permanganate and ang volume niya ay 1 liter. So siya, um, saan siya galing? We will be diluting the original solution and that is 1.00 molar. So as you can see, mas malaki si 1 molar kaysa sakay 0.400 molar. So this is the process of dilution wherein you will get a certain volume of this. Again, you will get a certain volume of this. Add, <clears throat> add solvent. Tapos magiging 1 liter na siya. Pero magbabago ang kanyang concentration. Bababa class yung concentration niya. Okay? So, ang mangyayari niyan, if you have like, for example, um, this is the 1 molar, right? 1 molar. Remember, 1, uh, 1 m is equivalent to 1 mole per liter. That's what it um, means. So, kung meron kang 1 mole of... Um, of the solute dissolved in 1 liter of solution that is actually equivalent to 0 0.400 mole pero this time um iba yung kanyang volume syempre pero i'll be giving you a more clear i mean clearer na example for our dilution later so again in carrying the process of dilution you have to remember that if you add more solvent it means that the concentration will decrease. Always remember that. Pag mag-add tayo ng solvent without changing the amount of the solute, it means we are diluting our solution. And um, it means that there will be decrease in the concentration of our solution. Don't forget ha, ang, ang concentration ang magbaba pero yung amount ng solute will still be the same. Ang inad lang natin is ang solvent. But since the concentration class is an intensive property, again, it's an intensive property, so uh, it is not really dependent on the uh, uh, amount of the substance being considered. Therefore, the moles of solute before dilution will be equal to the moles of solute after dilution. So we are talking about the solute here, ha? Kasi ang inad natin solvent naman. Hindi, na, hindi naman natin pinakialaman yung ating solute. So it will be the same before and after the dilution process. Mag-iiba lang yung concentration kasi nag-add tayo ng solvent. So again, let's uh, let's go back to our molarity. Molarity, remember, is de defined as the moles of solute in 1 liter of solution. So if we want to compute for the moles, we can just derive the formula uh, I did derive natin yung formula, formula class. Remember, the original one is molarity is equal to N over V. N class is the number of moles. V is the volume. And this is most likely liter. One liter of solution. But if you are asked to solve for the moles, then you have to derive the formula. Cross multiply that baba mo yung moles. And then you will have their molarity times volume. So if you are asked to compute for the moles of the solute, just use this formula. You just have to multiply molarity and volume. Again, you can compute for the moles there. Now, since the moles of solute uh, does not change during dilution, again, di ba sabi ko kanina, hindi nag-change ang moles ng solute um, sa dilution process kasi solvent naman yung inad natin. Therefore, from the formula, we can derive now, the uh, I mean, from the original formula, molarity is equal to moles over liter, we can derive now the formula that we can use for the dilution process. So, the, uh, as in your screen, you can see M1V1 or MIVI equals MFEF. That is class similar to what I gave you in the laboratory, which is 
C1B1 equals C2B2. This is again similar to that. It's just that uh, this one is more specific since we are talking about molarity. So, ginamit dito yung molarity. Okay? But actually, if we are not going um, to use the molarity, we can have other units or expressions of concentrations. Then that is the reason why I gave you the C1V1 equals the C2V2. C there is um, the concentration. Again, C there is the concentration. Now, the one here actually refers to the initial solution or your original solution, yung more concentrated solution mo. And the two there, the C2B2, is for your new solution, the diluted solution. Or, or in this case, you have here... Um, wait a minute. The F there is the final solution or the second one. Ang, ang gagawin natin na solution. So, hindi na natin isasali si moles sa ating formula. Plus again, uulitin ko, hindi siya nagbabago even if nagdi-dilute tayo. Okay. So, units of the VI and the VF, the volume, ha, volume number one and volume number two must be the same. If the volume class of the original solution is expressed in ML and the volume of the second solution or the final solution is in liter, you have to convert one of them para magkapareho sila. So, do not compute class na hindi magkapareho a unit okay and to check if you are if you got the correct answer um please make sure class that this one the initial molarity is always greater than the final molarity or the final concentration that's how you know that yes you get the correct answer Remember, this is a dilution process. We are making a less concentrated solution. So, dapat lang na mas malaki talaga yung initial natin na concentration kaysa sa final. Pero, um, it's the other way around for the volume. Since we are diluting, we are adding solvent, then it's correct to say that the final volume should be greater than the initial volume. That's how you check again now you have the correct answer. So, let's have an example for the dilution process. Number one, describe how you would prepare 5.00 times 10 raised to the power of 2 ml of a 1.75 molar sulfuric acid solution starting with an 8.61 molar stock solution of sulfuric acid. So this one, as you can see, is a dilution process. Bakit siya dilution process? Una, meron tayong dalawang concentration. They are both expressed in molarity. So you have here 8.61 M and 1.75 M. And then you are going to prepare now this certain volume of this concentration. So definitely, again, it's a dilution process wherein you can use the formula. Either you use the MIVI or the uh, sorry MFVF or the C1V1 equals C2V2. These are just the same. Ha? The same lang talaga yan sila. So, um, in this case, let's just use the MIVI equals MFBF <clears throat> because <coughs> the, the given is expressed in molarity. So, let's list down the given here. You have here the initial molarity, the, fa the initial volume, the initial, uh, sorry, the final molarity and the final volume. So you have to identify. Now, meron tayong dalawang 
uh, molarity class, paano mo malalaman na initial siya or final? Anong sinabi ko kanina? Always remember that the the initial molarity is greater than the final molarity. That's how you know. So, 8.61 versus 1.75. 8.61 is greater. So, that is the initial molarity. 8.61 M. And actually, you can see there, prepare. We will be preparing this. So, this, this one, the word here, prepare, will give you a hint that this one, the 5.00 times 10 raised to the power of 2 ml of 1.75 molar is the final solution. Okay, final solution yan siya. So, 1.75 M here. <clears throat> the final volume is 5.00 times 10 raised to the power of 2 ml. Now, what is missing in the problem? It's the initial volume. So, again, our original solution is uh, 8.61 molar. And then, hahanapin natin yung volume niya na i-dilute natin para makagawa tayo ng 5.00 times 10 raised to the power of 2 ml na ang concentration ay 1.75 m. So, if natapos niya i-list down yung given, then you can proceed with the, with the computation. You have 8.61 m times VI, remember that is missing in the problem. And then <clears throat> um, the MF is 1.75 M multiplied into the 5.00 times 10 raised to the power of 2 ML. Okay? So, ayan. I-substitute lang na to. Na wala tay i-ano ha, wala tay i-convert na unit. Kasi that is not asked in the problem. Again, it is not asked in the problem to convert the unit. To convert ML to liter. So, uh, as is lang tayo. Unless class kung sa problem, in talaga na the volume should be converted to liter. Yan lang yung time na magko-convert tayo. So, divide, uh, sorry, uh, you, we can actually divide both sides with the 8.61 M. So we can cancel it here. You can cancel the molar molarity in, in the other side. You will be left with the ML. So the VI now is 1.75. Let's have this. 1.75 times 5.00 times 10 raised to the power of 2 is 800. 75 ml divided by the 8.61. Divided by the 8.61, we can round off um, the final answer to two decimal places. We have 101.63 ml. So this one is the initial volume. Okay, that's how you um, <clears throat> compute for a problem involving Delusion. But the question kasi is how would you prepare? So magpe-prepare tayo ng ganito. Um, ganito yung answer niya. You will get 101.63 ml of the 8.61 molar solution and dilute it. Okay, magde-dilute tayo meaning mag add tayo ng solvent. Most likely it is water. Um, to complete the volume complete the volume to 5.00 times 10 raised to the power of 2 ml it's just um, the process ganun lang yung process niya meron kang 101.63 ml ng 8.61 molar mag-add ka ng solvent hanggang ang volume niya ay magiging 500 ml. The 5.00 times 10 raised to the power two of 2 is equivalent to 500 ml. Automatic class yung concentration niya ay 1.75. Okay? Questions? This is the answer actually pero naka-round off kasi ito. Wala pa lang questions. So, uh, should I give you another example? 
for the dilution process. Actually, you have this in your laboratory, but for the sake of um, okay. another example tayo na pwede niyong sundan. So, sa mga bahay natin, class, di ba, meron tayong um, ethanol or ethyl alcohol. Ginagamit natin <clears throat> as antiseptic or disinfectant, right? Nowadays, during the pandemic, di ba? Actually, when the, when the pandemic started, nagkakaubusan ng alcohol. So actually, if you have, uh, most of the time, we have 70% ethyl alcohol in our home, we can actually dilute this. Um, pwede nating babaan ang concentration kasi the ethyl alcohol is still effective up to 40% na concentration. Kaya niya pa rin patayin or i-inhibit ang growth ng bacteria. So for example, you have there a 70% ethyl alcohol. Percent muna ha, um, ibang unit ng concentration ito. Tapos meron ka dyang, lalo karami ito. This is 500 ml. Example, meron tayong 500 ml niyan. And then, yung ating desired concentration is 40%. So, how, uh, ano yung magiging final volume niya? Yeah, this is B2. Ayan, edit that. So, anong ginawa ko dyan, class? Yung C1 natin, C yung gagamitin ko ha kasi ibang unit ng concentration siya. 70%. I believe, meron kayong 70% dyan na alcohol. Tapos, yung initial volume niya is 500 ml. Meron kasi akong 500 ml na ethyl alcohol dito. Now, gusto ko, class, na i-dilute siya para dumami. Now, I believe, and based on literatures, yung 40% ng ethyl alcohol is still effective. So, hahanapin ko ngayon yung final volume. Ganun yung mangyayari dito ha kasi it's an, this one is an example ng dilution process na pwedeng gawin natin sa ating mga bahay. So 70 times 50, diretso na ito, 70 times 50 is 3,500. We cannot cancel the units. 40% times the V2. Now we need to isolate the V2 on this side. So let's divide this. Yes, Mariam? Ma'am, bakit po 70 times 50 yung kanina? Ay, 50 lang. 50 lang ako gingon. Sorry. This should be 500. This, is, this should be 35,000. Okay, sorry. Okay, and then let's divide both sides with a 40%. So you can isolate the V2 here. Cancel the percent. You will be left with the volume na ML. So 35,000 divided by 40 is 800. 75 ml. Okay, so this one is the final volume. So kung gusto niyo mag-prepare class ng 40% na ethyl alcohol, yung mga yung 70% yun na alcohol na 500 ml, dagdagan niyo ng tubig. Most likely the distilled water. Dagdagan niyo siya ng mga at least 375 ml para ang total volume niya ay 800. 75 ml. Pag naging 875 ml na yan siya, class, automatic yung concentration niya ay 40% na. Okay? That's how we do the dilution process. Okay? Questions for the dilution process? Anything na na-confuse kayo here? Or um, hindi niyo naintindihan? Para ma-address na natin before pa tayo mag-quiz or mag-exam. Eh? Wala? Can you use the MIVI equals MFDF ha, if the given is in molarity? But for this case, since the concentration is not in molarity, then you can use the C1V1 equals C2V2. Okay? Wala. This is the final, ha? the final solution or the diluted solution. And this one naman is the original. But the process <clears throat> in dilution, we will be adding solvent para dumami yung volume niya pero bababa yung kanyang 
concentration. So sinabi ko na to kanina na in the, in the dilution process, we only add solvent but we don't add or decrease the amount of solute. So the number of moles of solute remains the same before and after the dilution process. Okay? If you, are, uh, if you want to ask something, you can just send your questions at chat or you can, um, what do you call this? You can unmute para ma-raise niyo na agad yung inyong concern. So, let's move on. Now, we have two techniques class um, used in chemistry for stoichiometry. When you say stoichiometry, this is, um, this involves determining the amount of the substance uh, based actually in a chemical equation. So we have two here, the gravimetric analysis and the acid-base titration. Both of these processes are used in quantitative analysis, meaning we are determining the amount or concentration of a substance in a sample. So let us start with the gravimetric analysis. Pag sinabing gravimetric analysis class, it's a technique used in the laboratory to measure the mass of our substance. Okay, we are measuring here the mass of our substance. Now, this technique actually involves the precipitation reaction. Again, kapag ka, di ba, yung sa types of chemical reaction natin, na-discuss natin na merong mga certain uh, chemical substances na pag pinaghalo natin sila, even though they are both liquids, magkakaroon ng formation ng solid substance na insoluble. So, hindi siya nade-dissolve kahit anong stir or shake natin or swirl. So, ang tawag natin doon, precipitate. So, ang process class sa pag-analyze uh, ng precipitation reaction is gravimetric analysis. And generally, this technique is used for ionic compounds. So, bakit ionic com compounds? Kasi mostly, ang nagpo-produce ng precipitate ay yung mga ionic compounds natin. Okay? Okay. Yung chat si Bim. And mostly, uh, mga ionic compounds yung nagpo-produce uh, ng precipitate. Now, in the laboratory, anong ginagawa natin? Kapag ka meron tayong compound, we have the procedure here ha. First, meron tayong sample substance na unknown ang composition. Hindi natin alam. Meron tayong um, chemical na solid substance na hindi natin alam kung anong pangalan niya and ano ang kanyang composition. So, hindi natin alam ang kanyang chemical formula. So, kung gusto natin malaman, class, ang pangalan and composition ng unknown substance natin, ang gagawin natin is i-dissolve natin sa tubig After that, syempre solid yun. So, kailangan natin siya i-dissolve sa tubig. And then, ipagpapareact natin siya with another substance that will form a precipitate. So, meron tayong chemical equation dito and makikita natin sa product na merong precipitate na na-form. Now, anong gagawin natin? Kukunin natin yung precipitate. This is class, the process of gravimetric analysis. Um, the precipitate is filtered off. So, kukunin natin siya and idadry natin siya. Mostly, dinadry natin yung precipitate natin inside a laboratory oven. And then, after that, iwi-weigh natin, kukunin natin ang mass ng ating precipitate. Now, galing doon sa mass ng ating precipitate class, we can actually calculate the mass also of a particular chemical component doon sa original substance natin or doon sa unknown substance natin. So, ito yung ating 
procedure. So again, anong ginagawa? You have here an unknown substance. You don't know the name. You don't know the composition, the chemical formula. So you just dissolve it in water. After dissolving it in water, you have it reacted with, with a certain chemical compound. <clears throat> Pipiliin mo yan siya sa, sa laboratory kung anong compound yung gagamitin mo for the reaction. And then, mag-e-expect ka dito class na after the reaction, there will be formation of the precipitate. Okay? And then, anong gagawin natin sa precipitate? We will be getting it. If you filter natin, ita dry using an oven, and then it will weigh. And then based on the weight of the precipitate, we can actually compute for the weight also of a certain component sa unknown substance. Kaya si gravimetric analysis class is actually used, or it is actually a technique used to determine the first the amount of the substance and second the identity of that unknown substance so meron tayong ginagawa sa lab ha kaya baka magtaka kayo paano paano kaya nila na discover itong mga different chemical substances natin so, meron tayong mga ginagawa na process so, isa na diyan si gravimetric analysis so um, please be ready with your calculator also and your periodic table because itong gravimetric analysis is also a computation na process. So, bibigyan ko kayo ng example for the gravimetric analysis. So, example here is the silver nitrate. Example, alam talaga natin na silver nitrate siya. Again, alam natin na silver nitrate siya. Um, kasi yung case kanina sa procedure, unknown. So, this should be the unknown. Now, ang ginagawa sa laboratory, kung nagsususpect tayo na silver nitrate yung unknown na substance, we may add sodium chloride to it. And this one is a double displacement reaction. So, mag-exchange partners yan sila. Silver will, will now partner with the chloride and sodium will have the nitrate. Thus, you have there the sodium nitrate and the silver chloride. And as you can see in the equation, the silver chloride is solid. So, this will be the precipitate. Okay, this will be the precipitate, the silver chloride. So, based on the amount of silver chloride na na-produce class during the reaction, you can actually identify whether this substance is really a silver nitrate. Okay, yun yung um, importance ni gravimetric analysis. So, in the laboratory, since we cannot really do this personally, so let's just have the pictures. So, you have here a solution containing a known amount of sodium chloride. So, actually, this one in the graduated cylinder is the sodium chloride. And then, um, the precipitation of silver chloride, sodium chloride, yan, ha? upon the addition of silver nitrate solution from a measuring cylinder. In this reaction, silver nitrate is the excess reagent. Baliktad pala. Sorry. This one is the sodium chloride, and this will be the silver nitrate. And then in the laboratory, ihahalo natin yan sila class. So as you can see, merong solid substance na na-form, and this is the precipitate. By the way, the silver chloride is a white precipitate. Na kapag ka na-form na yung precipitate class, kukunin natin siya. Paano natin siya kukunin? Ito, we have here the the crucible and cover, may filter paper yan siya dyan sa loob para makuha natin yung solid substance and then yung um, liquid substance, syempre magpa-pass through lang. After natin makuha yung precipitate, i-dry natin siya, example, inside the oven, and then i-weigh natin siya. And then we can do the math. Again, we can do the math for the silver nitrate to 
to confirm if silver nitrate ba talaga yung inad natin. So gravimetric analysis is a highly accurate technique. It's a, it's a very accurate technique because the mass of a sample can be measured accurately. However, applicable lang si gra gravimetric analysis sa, kap sa mga equation class na merong complete precipitation. Meaning, magpo-produce talaga siya ng precipitate and that the precipitate is really insoluble. Kasi kapag uh, slightly soluble yung precipitate, merong madidissolve na part, hindi na siya 100% yield. You cannot really identify the original substance for that. So again, applicable lang siya kapag ka merong completion of the reaction, magpo-produce siya ng precipitate. So para mas maintindihan ang ginagawa natin sa gravimetric analysis, let me give you a sample problem. So in this case, you have here a 0 0.5662 grams sample. This one, sample of an ionic compound. You don't know the name. All we have, uh, all we know is meron siyang chloride ion. Again, meron tayong sample. Ang um, kanyang weight ay 0 0.5662 grams. Uh, hindi natin alam kung anong pangalan niya. Ang alam lang natin is meron siyang chloride ion sa kanyang composition na nakakombine with an unknown metal. So hindi natin alam. And then ang ginawa, dinisolve siya sa water and treated with silver nitrate. Kasi meron tayong hint, meron tayong chloride. So pwede natin siyang, uh, pwede tayong mag-add ng silver nitrate para ma-produce natin si silver chloride which is actually insoluble and magiging precipitate siya. So as you can see, naging precipitate talaga siya and this is the weight of the precipitate, 1.0882 grams of silver chloride precipitate ang na form. Now, um, the question is, what is the percent by mass of chloride in the original compound? Again, the question is, gano daw kadami in percent ha yung chloride sa original compound natin? I hope na intindihan nyo yung problem. Meron tayong ano Pero yung ano natin, alam natin na may chloride siya. Ang kanyang weight ay 0 0.5662 grams. Now, nag-undergo siya ng gravimetric analysis na process. Nag-add tayo ng silver nitrate. Tapos nakuha natin si silver chloride. And ang kanyang weight ay 1.8, sorry, 1.0882 grams. Now, ang question, gano kadami yung chloride sa original compound? So, gagamitin natin ngayon yung weight ni silver chloride na precipitate para ma-compute ito. Okay? So, please listen kasi medyo mahaba ang process ng computation for this. So, meron tayong actually steps sa computation. Explain ko sa inyo. This one, strategy lang yan sa, sa taas ha. Um, this one is the step one for the computation. The step one is actually computation of the percent chloride in the precipitate. Precipitate muna tayo. Ano nga yung precipitate sa problem natin? Silver chloride. And ang kanyang weight ay 1.0882 grams. Pero ang una natin compute ang percent chloride na nasa precipitate. And how do we get that? To get the percent chloride in the precipitate class, you need the atomic weight of chloride or the element na hinahanap natin and i-divide mo siya sa molecular weight of the 
precipitate. Times 100. Okay? Times 100. Now, um, dito lang sa gravimetric analysis, since we are dealing with the mass, no, um, it will be more accurate if hindi natin i-round off si atomic weights sa whole number. So kung nakita niyo sa screen, gumamit sila ng two decimal places para sa atomic weights ng ating substances. Kagaya ni chloride. Look at your periodic table. The atomic weight of chloride here is 35. Look at the periodic table, 35.45. Actually, diba it's grams per mole, but you can actually use grams only. Now, molecular weight of the precipitate. Again, the precipitate is silver chloride. So, alam natin na si, si uh, chloride is 35.45. Sorry, nabaliktad lang, but that is one. Can you look at the silver? Um, ilan yung ano class? Atomic weight ni silver dyan. Two decimal places, please. 107.87 po. 107.87. So this is 107.87. This is 35.45. This is from the book. Kasi so I'm not really sure kung... Anong ginamit nila here? 35.45. Yeah, 143.42. May hindi sila ni round of dito, I think. 107.87, 35.45. Nevertheless, let's just have 143. Asan ako? 143.32 grams per mole. So I think again... Hindi, hindi sila nag-round off here for the silver, kaya 143.4 ang ginamit nila. But for the sake class na uniform tayo, ha, since gumamit na tayo ng two decimal places for the chloride na atomic weight, gagamitin na rin natin siya sa silver. So palitan natin ito. This is 143.32 grams per mole times 100. So, cancel mo yung grams per mole. Yung ating unit dito is syempre percent. Pag nag-times ka sa 100 class, percent yun na siya. So, 35.45 divided by 143.32 times 100. We can have two decimal places for our answer here. 24.73. Gamay lang muna siya ligas sa ano Iyahang decimal. So this is for the step one. Again, this is for the step one. Ito daw kadami class ang chloride sa precipitate. Kasi kinocompute natin dito yung percent ng chloride sa precipitate mismo. So 24.73% of the precipitate is actually for chloride. The remaining percent is for silver. Ganun yung ginamin dyan sa step 1. Questions sa step 1? Kaya hangtod step 3 pa ni? Before na ito makuha ang tamang answer. Wala, nasundan yun ha. Please copy the, the formula for the step 1. Now, for the step 2. Pag mali ka sa step 1 class, mamali na pong kaana sa step 2. So please be careful. Bakit? The step 2 involves... Ang step 2 natin actually is for the computation of mass of chloride. Chloride lang ang sinasulat ko ha kasi... Um, chloride naman yung hinahanap natin. Pero it can be different element depende sa problem. So mass of chloride in the precipitate pa rin. What is our formula here? Mass of the element na hinahanap, in this case it's chloride, is equal to the percent of chloride in precipitate times the Mass of precipitate. So this is our formula here. So itong percent chloride na precipitate class, na-compute natin yan sa step 1. What was that again? 24.73%. 
And then itong mass ng precipitate given ito sa problem, right? It's 1.0882 grams. Now, baka nag-taka nag, uh, kayo, bakit siya naging 0.2472? Let's make this 73. Bakit siya naging ganyan? Kasi di ba, pag percentage, hindi mo yan siya i-multiply i diretso. The percentage should be converted first uh, sa decimal before ka mag-multiply. So, paano ka mag-convert sa decimal? Move mo to decimal places um, to the left or i-divide mo siya sa 100. 24.73 divided by 100, you will get the decimal sa ating percent. So, this becomes 0.2473 and then i-multiply mo siya class ngayon sa mass ng precipitate which is 1.0882 grams you will get 0 0.2691 so this time it's four decimal places so again 0 0.2691 grams that is for the step two now let's have the step three and this is the final step this is now the computation of the percent chloride in the original solution. Or original solution or original compound. Ito naman ang hinahanap, di ba? Gano'ng karami daw si chloride sa original compound natin. So ano yung formula natin dito? Percent chloride for the original compound is equal to the mass of chloride in the precipitate class divided by the mass of original compound times 100. So itong mass of chloride sa, precipit uh, sa precipitate, ito yung na-compute natin sa step 2. Kaya, pwede natin isulat 0 0.2691 grams divided by mass of original compound. It was actually given in the problem. It's 0 0.5662 grams and then times 100. So, you can cancel this grams here and you can divide na 0 0.2691 divided by 0 0.5662 times 100, we can have two decimal places for the final answer. We can have here 47.52%. So, meron lang silang kaibahan na 1.01 .01. kasi nag, hindi sila na ground off for the silver. So, this is now the correct answer class. So, sa original compound natin, hindi natin alam kung ano talaga siya, pero ngayon alam na natin na 47.52% of the original compound is chloride alone. So the remaining percent will be for the unknown metal that is yet to be determined. So 100 minus 47.52 is 52.48%. This is for the unknown metal. So alam na natin kung gaano kadami ang chloride sa ating original substance. So, pwede pa, actually, after gravimetric analysis, may mga um, succeeding test pa na ginagawa para ma-determine mo itong unknown metal. The gravimetric analysis is just the first step. Questions for this one? I hope nasundan ha. Just follow the steps and please copy the formula so that you will be guided in the computation. I am a round of 47.52. Pwede sa ako ang ano ha, instruction sa quiz or sa exam. Saya kung instruction final answer should be rounded off to 
two decimal places. So, ayaw mo pag round off during the process. Isang unsa pa na siya kataas class. Ayaw mo pag round off kung ang akong instruction sa final answer lang mo mag round off. Okay? So, again, take note. Gravimetric analysis will not really establish the whole identity of the unknown compound. Hindi mo naman talaga malalaman right after the testing kung ano talaga ang compound na yun. Pero it will help us narrow down the possibility kung ano talagang compound yun siya gamit ang gravimetric analysis. Kagaya nung ating example, alam na natin na 47% of that Original compound is chloride alone. Hahanapin na lang natin yung remaining 52% na unknown metal. Kasi sa chemistry naman, yung ating rule is hindi naman talaga, wala talagang compound class na magkapareho talaga yung kanilang percent composition by mass. So hahanapin na lang talaga natin yung 52% na yan na unknown Metal. So that's the use class of gravimetric analysis. Should I give you another example of the computation? Before time mag move on sa titration, let me see. Yung ano class ha, yung computation na yun is applicable to any other na elements. Hindi lang siya for chloride. So, palitan nyo lang ng um, other element na ina-ask sa problem. Kung different ha, kung different ang ina-ask. Yung mga chloride doon sa ating um, example. So, this is example number two. Wait lang ha, because I'll be thinking um, for a new one. Okay. Hmm. Wait. Okay, so this one is our next problem. A 0 0.88 grams unknown sample is dissolved in water and reacted with lead nitrate. The reaction yields 1.51 grams of lead chloride precipitate. Take note, iba yung compound na ginamit ko ha, but chloride pa rin naman yung hinahanap. What is the percentage mass of chloride in the original or unknown compound? So I'll give you time to uh, follow the steps kasi mas, ano, mas maintindihan nyo siya kung kayo muna mismo ang mag-compute and then right after I'll be computing it sa screen para alam natin yung tamang answer. And if mali yung answer nyo, malaman nyo kung saan kayo nagkamali sa steps. Okay? Again, I'll give you five minutes to answer this.
Oo, two, two decimal places pa rin sa atomic weights ang gagamitin para uniform tayo lahat. And then mag-round off lang kayo class sa final answer. So wag, wag kayo mag-round off class sa steps 1 and step 2. Round of ang um, final answer to two decimal places. Hindi sa step 1 and sa step 2 ha. Sa step 1 at sa step 2, bisa kung sa panakataas ang answer na calculator, kopyahan yung nakataas. <laughs> the PBCL2. The, the precipitate. Wait, maka may naman ako tubig. Question mark. Then it's sure. Yeah, let's wait for the others.
Okay? Wala na yung magpahabol. Wala na yung mag-send. Nalahilig mong answer. <laughs> Nalahilig mong answer. Sige, let us see kung say tama ani ini yung ibang sender. Let's start with the given. Sa so given plus the unknown sample na mass, ang mass niya is 0.88 grams. Tapos, ang precipitate, kung saan ang precipitate na to PBCL2. Take note na, ay nakabot lang niya, PBCL2 precipitate. Ang weight, ane, or ang mass is 1.51 Grams. Now, the question is, what is the percent chloride dito sa original compound? So, let's start with the step one. The step one again is computation ng percent chloride in the precipitate. Now, what is our formula for this? Percent chloride in the precipitate is equal to the atomic weight of chloride divided by the molecular weight of the precipitate times 100. So, ang atomic weight sa atong chloride yan eh? 35.45 grams per mole. Now, for the precipitate, we still need to Compute for its molecular weight. Our precipitate is PBCl2. Dili PBNO3 ha. Ang PBNO3 is just used for the reaction. But we are looking for the precipitate here. So you have to use the lead chloride. So lead and chloride. Meron kang isang lead, dalawang chloride. Multiplied natin sa kanilang atomic weights. Can you look at the atomic weight for lead? What is the atomic weight for lead? 207.24. 207.2. And then this is 35.45. So this is 207.2. This is 35.45 times 2 is 70.9. Let's add 207. 0.2 plus 70.9 is 278.1. So this is 278.1 grams per mole times 100. Okay, so let's cancel this and let's divide. 35.45 divided by... 278.1 times 100 is 12.74721323 percent. So na natay answer for the step one. This is the step one here. Now for the step two, let me change the color of my pen para hindi ta maglibo. Step two is the computation of the mass, chloride mass niya in precipitate. So what is our formula? Um, chloride in precipitate is equal to the percent of chloride in the precipitate times the mass mismo of the precipitate. So itong percent chloride sa precipitate, ito yung nakuha natin sa step 1. Um, 12.74721323% times the mass of the precipitate it is given in the problem. It's 1.51 grams. So sa pag-multiply class, remember this is in percent. Hindi mo siya pwedeng i-multiply direct. So gawin mo muna siyang decimal. So how are you going to make that sa decimal? I-divide mo lang siya sa... 100. So 12.74721323 divided by 100 is 0 0.12747213323 times 1.51 is 0 0.1924829123. Grams. So, yan na ngayon, class, ang uh, amount ng chloride sa precipitate 
natin. Ay, wait. I missed something. I missed something sa computation. Balik, balik, balik. Nganong, nganong mo balik ta? Kay times 2 atong chloride. <laughs> I missed something in the computation. Let me delete this. Yeah, let me delete this. So this is not correct also. I forgot. I forgot class na it's PBCL2. Take note, it's PBCL2. PBCL2. And pila kabuok ang chloride din he? Duha. So, dapat ang gamito na to is 35.45 times 2. This should be 70.9. Kasi percent chloride man, lahat ng chloride in the precipitate. So, hindi lang naman isa yung chloride natin. Again, hindi lang naman isa yung chloride natin sa precipitate natin. Dalawa, PBCL2. Kaya, ang gagamitin ko for the atomic weight of chloride ay hindi 35.45. Ita times 2 ko siya, kaya 70.9. So, 70.9 divided by 278.1 times 100 is 25.494426.47. Okay? So, gikorek ko na siya ha. Um, I hope nasundan bakit 70.9 ang ginamit ko. Kasi dalawa yung chloride natin sa lead chloride. Unlike sa first natin na example na AGCL. So doon, 35.45 lang talaga ang ginamit ko sa step 1 kasi isang chloride lang naman yan siya. Dito, dalawa. So do not forget that. So yun ang gagamitin natin ngayon here in the computation. This is now 25.4445 7%. Yan. So, 25.494426.47 divided by 100. Let's make it in decimal form. So, 0.25494426.47 times 1.51 is 0.38496 5839 grams. So alam na natin ang mass talaga. Kanina kasi percent lang ng chloride sa sample natin. Ngayon alam na talaga natin kung gaano siya kadami in grams. Yung chloride ha in the precipitate. So pag alam na natin class kung gaano kadami si chloride sa precipitate natin, we can proceed sa step 3 which is now the computation of the percent chloride in the compound mismo or sa unknown compound natin. So percent chloride now, what is our formula again? Let me place it here sa taas. Percent chloride is the mass of chloride in the precipitate divided by the mass of the unknown compound times 100. So, yan yung ating final na formula. So, ang mass of chloride in the precipitate, this is mass of chloride in precipitate, ha? Yun yung na-compute natin sa step 2, which is 0.3849658. Grams divided by the mass of our original compound that is given in the problem. It's 0.88 grams times 100. Let's cancel the grams here. So we'll have 0.3849658.39 grams divided by 0.88 times 100. Please round off the final answer to two decimal places. Therefore, the percent chloride in our original compound is 43.75%. So yan, yan kadami class ang chloride natin sa original 
compound natin. So, the remaining percent, remember this is 100%, right? So, 100 minus 43.75, ang 56.25% will be for the unknown metal na kasama ni chloride doon sa unknown compound natin. Ito for chloride alone. So, that's how you do class A computation um, involving the gravimetric analysis. So, yung iba na nag-send ng answer, maybe um, parehas tayo ng um, mali ata sa first computation na nakalimutan ko na ang chloride ay dalawa sa precipitate. Kaya, I, I think yung iba sa inyo parang one half lang yung answer naging 21 point something percent. But do not forget ha, it times 2 nyo siya kapag dalawang atoms ng chloride ang nasa precipitate. Pero pag isa lang, no need. Just use 35.45. So, what is this? Let me record. Kahit mali yung answer niya, I'll be recording this. Kasi nag-effort man mo din ha Wait Pero katong karun lang nag-send. Wala, nag-appeal ha. Kinahuman naman sa oog, compute. Oh, pag wala, Hazel, pag wala siyang subscript, automatic one lang talaga yan siya. Okay? Again, pag walang subscript, one lang talaga. Kagaya ng first example natin, silver chloride. Sa silver chloride, the chemical formula for silver chloride is just AgCl. Walang subscript. So, automatic this is counted as 1. So, kung magko-compute ka dito gamit ang atomic weight ni chloride, ang gagamitin mo dyan, 35.45 lang talaga. Pero sa example na ito, since the precipitate is lead chloride, you have 2 chlorides here. So, it times 2 mo din ito. Kaya naging 70.9. Kasi ang hinahanap naman natin dito is the percent chloride in the precipitate. So, dalawang chloride yun. So, kaya dapat i-account din natin lahat. Hindi lang isa. Okay? Question so far? It's 8.55. Any question? The remaining topic is, um, what do you call that? Volumetric, ano, acid-based titration. I'll just send a video for that. Ako ang mag-lecture, pero I'll send a video after this kasi kulang yun ko sa time. My problem actually is your section kasi kayo yung mostly affected ng mga holidays and yung mga, mga, mga walang pasok. So, nadidelay kasi kayo. Kaya hindi ko matapos-tapos. Ang problema kasi natin sa section A and sa section B, meron pa kaming meeting ngayon na week dalawa and next week dalawa. So, apat na meetings pa ang sa section A and sa section B. So, matatapos talaga namin itong reactions in aqueous solution. So, ang um, solution ko for this problem is I'll be recording myself na mag-discuss ng remaining topic. Dalawa lang naman yun, um, acid-based titration and redox titration. And then I'll give a lot of examples there in the video so that you can 
you can follow. And then maglalagay ako ng part doon sa Schoology wherein you can raise your questions if you have questions sa, sa video. And then doon ko sasagutin yung question ninyo. So, ganun na lang kay Muragli. So, kaayo ang, <laughs> ang section si Pirmi Matamaan. Okay? Any questions so far before time mag-end? 